Hello. Okay. Hi, everybody. So, I'm giving a talk about number plates, and I actually found for a while it pretty ridiculous that actually somebody has to. Um, yeah, um, I'm hurrying up because I wasted quite a time off already. So, who am I? I'm McFly. Um, I do security related stuff for a living, but most of you possibly know me as the guy with the coins. Uh, so, who of you has a coin? Hands up. That's a noticeable amount. I hope you like it. So, does it work? Oh, this works awesome. So, what is ANPR? Um, hands up for people that know roughly what I'm talking about, will be talking about. Okay, this is the UK. You seem to have quite a lot of those. Um, I'm from the Netherlands. Uh, over there it comes also. It also comes to medium security and uh, related points. So, what is ANPR? NPR is Automated Number Plate Recognition. So that means uh, it's done without humans. Um, it focuses on the number plates and basically nothing else. And it tries to recognize something for that. And it's an awesome technology, what people think. So the symbol shows it a bit. Um, you usually have a camera that is triggered in, uh, usually with a magnetic coil. Um, so your car is made out of metal, and if you have a magnetic coil in the ground, you drive over it, you disturb this magnetic field, and you can measure that pretty easily, and um, that then triggers a camera. Uh, who of you has ever opened the gate with a fire extinguisher? Hands up. Okay, you truly already understood the problem. So, what is it used for? It is very often used, especially in um, the Netherlands, for parking enforcement by the city and uh, by private people. So the parking garages have a number plate reader at the entrance that reads your number plate, you drive in, and you can't uh, excuse yourself that you only have been standing two hours in there. But also the city drives around with cars that have number plate readers on their roof, and they try to uh, write down who is parking, and when you go and park, you put in your number plate in the computer, so you're whitelisted there, and that's how they enforce that. Speed control, I don't know how it's called in uh, the Netherlands, in, in England, in Germany, and in the Netherlands, it's called Trajekt Controller. Um, I think section control or something like that. Um, and there is uh, surprisingly use of the law enforcement of that that just looks for your camera who's leaving the city and uh, all this terrorism happens lately so they have to do all of this fancy thing that are completely useless. But anyway, so parking enforcement, that's how it typically looks. Uh, you have a small column. There is a window behind there is a camera that tries to read a number plate from your car. Um, this picture is taken at really good visibility and all of the point, all of those things, which uh, will be a point later on the talk. Parking enforcement, that's how it looks in Rotterdam. You see the readers on top? Uh, I'm, can you understand me well? Okay. And this is how the speed control uh, looks in the Netherlands. I think it's pretty obvious for most of the nerds how it works. Um, you have two points where you try to identify the moving objects over the road. Uh, you know the distance between those poles, and that allows you pretty precisely to calculate the speed, of, the speed of the object that was traveling over there. You have something like that in the UK too, right? What is it called? Average speed? Ah, okay, thank you. I think I saw some of those, but yeah. So, law enforcement. Uh, in the Netherlands, there is very often what they call the milieu zone, the environmental zone. Uh, your car may go in or not, depending on the number plate. Because they do a database lookup and look what emission loss uh, your car fulfills and it will directly tell you. This means that the car with the number plate 31 SHD2 mach well in, so is allowed to go into the city. It directly tells you. So you drive there, it takes half a second, they do a lookup over there. Why do I care? That's the house I'm living in. Uh, it's very fancy, uh, it looks at least very fancy, and it has a parking garage, and the 
architect also wanted to be very fancy, so he put uh, number plate readers in there. And I hate them. Because, like it's the Netherlands, I'm, I'm from Germany, I'm used to some things called privacy, because we have laws about those things. But basically, I at some point tried to ask, how long do you store that? What do you mean, how long do you store that? And when do you delete it? What do you mean, delete? So from the con building of the starting of the construction of the building, still all of the bookings were still in the computer. So, And I think that's a pretty average case. So alone from the privacy standpoint, it's worth looking into those things. Um, does anyone of you know the term GDPR? If you have a parking garage, like European Union decided, by the way, number plates is private data, just saying. <laughs> So, this is a symbolic pic uh, of this. I got annoyed about that um, and tried to talk to the vendor about that. Um, well, first my house and basically nobody cared. And uh, they said, but the vendor said it's like really secure. Very secure. And I work as a cons uh, security consultant. So that means most times I actually go to other people and smart ass about their security. Sometimes better, sometimes, well, you yeah, know that. And I didn't have an assignment at the time, and in my company you can just play around with stuff when you don't have an assignment. Um, and this is also built in our company parking garage. So I had a bit of position to actually talk to the vendor about that. And the vendor said, this is very secure, expert tries, believe us. So, yeah, how the system works. Um, you have a car, there's a magnetic coil on the ground, I'll go through this real quick. Camera takes a picture, um, that's also a car for the computer, just saying. Um, and uh, then the computer decides to get access. The technology work that's behind that, it's, uh, it's an infrared camera that works with flash. The picture gets underexposed. So if you do that, that's how it looks. Like this is a symbolic pic of another car from the side with uh, a camera shot in roughly that settings. You see very quickly those retroreflective stuff and you see what's standing there. So what happens with that? That is a random pic I found on the British people. That's how it looks. The system then looks up in the database if you're allowed to go in, and then you can go in. Right? Clear for everybody till here? So. <laughs> so I thought, a number plate, faking a number plate, that's really hard, right? Because this is defined fonts and all of this stuff. So I tried to get some reflective foil to play around with our garage. Turns out they don't sell it in the Netherlands, like the yellow tone. I didn't know about the infrared at that point. Um, so you, you can't really easily buy it in the Netherlands. But the online dealers from Germany, where the number plates are white, have zero problem selling that to you. <laughs> so internet. Um, buying this, this stuff is sold in square meters. So I got told the roll where you cut them from is 1 meter 22 wide. And the minimum they can cut is one meters, so that's amount the stuff of things you play get with you get from that. Uh, yeah, and I think that is the point where I wanted to put in the video. Yes, uh, so I got bored, as I said. So this is a very short video. Um, let me play this. So you see what's happening there? Fire extinguisher. Oh, wait. Yeah. You stop? Out of the screen. Hmm? Out of full screen? Yeah. yeah. Um, I thought it wasn't it. even a full screen. Okay, and then drag it to the number. Yep, that's it. And then if you go full screen again, all good. Play. Err. Uh, that's it. And then. That's it. And then no! <laughs> Do you have, there's a sound? Yeah, that, I guess there's sound on. I don't need yeah, sound. Yeah, Chris Fix here today. The problems when you have when you suddenly have to deal with Windows. 
So this is the. Yes, I can't see my thing there. Okay. Wait, doesn't this just do this? So I can't see my display. That's why I'm not putting it easily in full screen. I think the, it shows basically the general problem. It's a rather short video. So the fire extinguisher makes you a car. Holding a number plate makes you have a number plate, and then you have access to the garage. So, oh wait, there is still half. So, I didn't thought that was, like, I was just annoyed about that, so I made a tweet about that, and for my numbers, that became very successful, and like 50,000 people retweeted that. So, uh, I thought I underestimated that. So, what else? I'm very sure every one of you has seen this picture. <laughs> That is, that is not from me. That is a random picture I pulled off the internet. And I thought that's a rather stupid idea. Like, it's an awesome idea, but it's too many characters. And uh, so I tried this with my car. Can you see that? Because the idea is that you want to get access, so dropping the database is not actually helping you very much. Um, so if you want to get access, uh, you'd rather try to something like, uh, I like closing the thing in 101, 1 equals 1 which is always true. Um, yeah, doesn't work in our system, but after I posted this video online, I got contacts to, well, other people that work in this area. And, well, the earlier system that we had, which is still very common, um, runs on a Windows 2003 server, um, and it requires Microsoft, uh, uh, MySQL for Microsoft version 3, so over there it actually works. Uh, speaking from practice, the most difficult part is getting the spaces right. So um, I would encourage you to uh, try that in other situations, because I was told after that was our software doesn't work with a different number. So why is there so much of the problem? Because the, it doesn't end here. Um, you remember the automated, right? In the ALS, LS, LSR. Um, number plates is not a collision free namespace. And a lot of those software requirements for this kind of software is written by government, who always thinks, like, we're from the Netherlands, so number plates are unique, which is true in the Netherlands. But you can find number plates that are totally valid number plates in Germany, like if you just look at the string there. Um, yeah, so that is one of the problems. Next problem is multiple number plates. In this case, it's actually about multiple number plates in your car. Have you ever seen a truck from the front? Like seriously, on the highway, look for that. You will see that they have number plates in their windscreen. Do you ever see? Usually it's uh, their name. But if you talk to them, they say, yeah, they're awesome. Half of the speed controls doesn't work anymore. Um, so, yeah, and uh, there's another thing that I left the slide out because it's a bit too explain and looking at the time, I think I'm nearly through soon. Anyway, yes. Um, another thing is this works over retro reflective. So if every one of you wants to play around with that, don't do that because license places are legally protected. So there is a law at some point that says a license plate is an identifier and then usually it points to somewhere else or technical referenciation where they point this color. So if you ever play around with this, 
remember, this is infrared readers. Red works fine, and that's legally not a number plate. Because like some countries have yellow, some have white. In your country, you have both. Um, but in the beginning, I was very much in copying exactly the right tone of the color and trying to mask that. And you possibly saw earlier in the slides here this. Um, so in the beginning, I put a lot of effort actually in creating those, well, not number plates. Um, the upper one is made with masking tape, pretty exactly the font that I need. Uh, the lower one is with Sharpie. Um, and I can meanwhile just draw this like with one stroke with a thick Sharpie per number. Because if you just think about what does those things do? I just want to find this one picture, which is totally at the beginning. So this is good weather, right? But this system is required to also work under shitty weather in snow and if you look how the systems work, and if you just think to be where your car, where do your headlights point? Pretty much at this thing. So this is, every one of you is a photographer who has ever tried in bad weather with snow against the light taking a picture of something. That's actually pretty hard. So those number plate readers are very, very fault tolerant when it comes to writing and recognizing something. So, yes, uh, your handwriting will, if you train a bit, most likely be completely fine. And they use this to protect, uh, um, just put it in a different way, to protect an area with access where they write the secret that is required to gain access to this area in clear text on the outside of that object. So did anybody of you ever look in like authentication protocols and so on? That doesn't sound like a good idea for me. So, I'd invite you all to play around with that. And I'd like to mention one point in there that in my points is uh, from a more security professional person. Uh, if you want to take this back to your software development or anything. What actually runs wrong here is failing to identify user-generated input. Because if you start looking at the point from this automated number plate readers are completely user-generated input, because I can glue patterns of reflective and non-reflective foil in different colors on my car as long as I want, as long as it's not a number plate, but the computer doesn't know. So you're actually dealing with user-generated input. Um, there's other things that you uh, do. So I did this thing about barcodes, so that has the same problem. So just really quickly, you think if you want to work with barcodes, also deal with that problem that very often you just have user-generated input um, that is not properly identified by the software developer to <laughs> actually um, really... <laughs> work with this way. So for a lot of those people you work in security, uh, the essence of this talk should be about have you really identified what you're dealing with, that machine-generated input? Because if you take a picture and throw it through an OCR library and take that to push that against databases or other systems in your system, that possibly is not a good idea. So, yeah. Questions? You, sir. I think I think I'll three minutes or so. Do you know? Sorry. Do you know if anybody's done a freedom of information request on their license plate data from, like, these average speed checking systems? Not there. I only tried uh, the GDPR approach on my house and my company just to, like find out how it works. By the way, it works hilarious. Um, but yeah, it's private data, which is recorded by the government. So over here, where you have a stronger information request, that might be an interesting thing to ask. Hey, quick one. Um, what is the yellow reflective stuff called? Um, do I have it in here? Uh, Scotch light from 3M. It's like it's, it's a default product. It's 
anti-radar refractive foil. And like what it's used for is those security things on cars and trucks and all of those things. So look at people that sell those people. Like your average foil or top dealer has no problems getting that. It's cheap. Like the square meter is somewhere around four or five euros. So you, um, you showed the picture of the police car with the retro reflective on the yes. front of the... Does that actually affect it in the same way as the number plate? You mean that it also the system will detect the police car? Yeah. Well, yeah. will it? Yeah. For legal reasons, I have not tried the word "police," which is the Netherlands the correct "police" police thing on there. But I wouldn't be surprised if there is white lists in those security things for like the ambulances and the police. But that is speculation. But yes, it gets read. Everything that's reflective gets read. So if you put your company advertisement in a reflective on your car, already quite a problem for those. If you look where you're legally allowed to put your number plates uh, on your car, you're allowed to put it above the screen, like above the windscreen, and very much down at the car, you're allowed to move it to the sides. So the area they have to look for number plates is actually pretty big. That leaves a lot of space for drawing things. Like it, it would be interesting to have a captcha on your like windscreen and really reflective. <laughs> Another question. One over there. Uh, are there any easy ways of, of uh, putting an infrared uh, message on the car that? Yes. Um, what you can do is make your car retroreflective or an array on that, like guess white, for example. And then you can write on there with white non retroreflective foil. That is really, really hard to see. It's actually so hard to see that it was, I just wasn't able to make a picture from that. I have that at home for the lulz, but uh, I was recommended to leave all of those ex practical examples I have at home because I have to go over this border and your British border guys really don't understand humor. <laughs> or science. More questions? Uh, do you know that the window tinting film, if you get the very dark stuff, lets through infrared so you can see a number plate perfectly well through it, but visible to the eye, you can't see it. So you can easily hide uh, a, a number plate that people can't see, but the cameras can. Yes, um, you can do quite a lot of things with that. Like It's one of those things where in the beginning, beginning I just pissed and see, like, that's a rabbit hole. I wonder how deep that goes. And if you start thinking about that and looking in those details, there's so much fun in that. Like, I, yesterday somebody told me an example where we found an example that we could verify a number plate that exists in Germany and the Netherlands. So, automated, verifying this over different countries with colliding namespaces, that's pretty challenging in automatic, right? I mean, a lot of you write software. So, any more questions? One more question over there. Um, this is bordering on hypothetical. Um, I wonder if, could you, or did you ever try doing the same trick as putting white on white over a number plate? So what you end up with is one big black square that to the visible eye looks like a number plate, but to the camera looks like a black square. For the camera it looks like a square, and for the eyelid it looks like a number plate. That wouldn't work with so easily because I haven't found any retroreflective black so far. But if we find that, possibly, because it like in infrared retroreflective might work. I'm not the 3M's expert on that, but yeah, I guess the biggest problem will be finding a retroreflective black. That's can I get some of that? <laughs> yeah. Ah, nice. Yes, I'd like to have some of that, please. Like, you'll find me at this milliways, you know, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so, if you have some of that, I'd like to have that. 
Okay, it's 14.33. Does anyone else have a question? I, I would take one more question if there's one. Three, two, one. Okay, there is one. That was just in time. I know I already had a question. E-ink? Maybe. I haven't tried. Like, I didn't get my fingers on an e-ink that is big enough, but that might be an interesting approach, yes. Okay. Well, then I say thank you all for coming at this uh, early time of the day. Um, I hope not too many of you had hangovers and that was horrible because of that. Um, yeah, um, the EMF is mostly over, but if you ever go to a hacker camp again, come over to Milliways and uh, drink some uh, beer, whiskey, cider, whatever there, and uh, enjoy, or I hope you all enjoyed this EMF camp. Thank you.